Every day in the United States, four children die as a result of child abuse, and 70% of them are under the age of three. More than 90% of child sexual abuse victims know their perpetrator. Last year, Safe Horizon served over 4,000 victims of child abuse. So in April of 1990, I joined the Queen's uh, sex crime squad as a sergeant. Um, there was a secretary in the unit that had two desks. And I asked her, why do you have two desks? And I was the sergeant at the time. She said, oh, because of all these. And she pulled open the drawers and they were filled with reports of child abuse that were coming in at such a rate, um, we didn't have enough detectives to actually be assigned. In 1991, um, Victim Services, the prior name of Safe Horizons, really came out with this study that really blew us all away. The big finding in that study was children were being interviewed at a minimum of eight times. In one case, 27 different times about sex abuse. If you think about your own child, if something so horrible happened to your child, think about 27 people. And maybe that's the high point, but just eight people. Three people is too many. The first child advocacy center in this country that was fully co-located was in Brooklyn, operated by Safe Horizon in 1996. That program has now spread to four, uh, three other boroughs, so we have a four, and we'll have a fifth in the Bronx coming soon. But it's also been the model for child advocacy centers all across the United States. So the impact that the child advocacy centers have on victims of child abuse is that they are actually co-located. So because the multidisciplinary team are within the same building, it makes it that much easier to coordinate the cases. It's together with NYPD, uh, the DA's office, uh, medical provider, and administration for Children's Good Services. And to minimize the amount of interviews that a child um, has to go through. Well, the difference between going into a CAC and the police precinct years ago is quite dramatic. When I had a busy squad in Queens. It's like, oh, can you wait over there, sit on that hard wooden bench until we're ready for you? and the parents sitting there with all kinds of things going through their head. Not too long after I joined the board, I went on a tour of the Brooklyn CAC. That's when, for me, it became more than just a story or statistics because I saw kids in the waiting room playing with the toys. I saw their families waiting to see people from Safe Horizon or the police department or ACS there to help them. The child came in and she was very timid to herself, kind of in the corner. So um, I started to engage with her and, and I tried to play with her at the time in the, in the playroom. And she was just like, no, I don't want to play. And I said, are you okay? You know, we're going to talk in a little while. And she, her first question to me was, am I in trouble? And I said, no, you're not in trouble. You'd never be in trouble here. And bringing her into uh, the interview room, I was actually doing the interview that day with her, and um, she was able to fully disclose about what happened. And she was, of course, emotional. Um, but after the interview, she told me, she said, she said, thanks. I feel so much better now. When kids are, are grateful because they were just able to get that stuff off of their chest and, and in hopes that we can help them, it's something incredible that no one can ever, no one can ever take that away from me.